So here we are going to look at what is called sulfur and soggy mirrors. We talked about sulfur in the stratosphere as a way to reflect sunlight. But here we are talking about sulfur in the troposphere, which is a poison, uh, kills many people, uh, lots of emissions from coal burning, for example. And uh, it, human beings are modifying the sulfur cycle just like we are modifying the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle, of course, also phosphorus cycle. Uh, soggy mirrors is a reference to the uh, clouds, which based on the water content, the water droplet size and distribution of size uh, can have different optical properties. How much uh, shortwave radiation from the sun they scatter and reflect depends on uh, this cloudlet uh, cloud droplet distribution. Uh, as a writer who's a reporter, this guy always starts with a little poem. So here is something from Henry David Thoreau from Walden in 1854. If you have built castles in the air, your work need, to, need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now put the foundations under them. So we are uh, in fact looking at many ideas of uh, manipulating the weather in some ways, uh, cloud seeding and cloud optical properties and changing optical properties of the ocean surface and so on. So these are castles in the air, but if you can uh, show that they can work and have no dangerous or unwanted unintended consequences, then uh, you are doing well. The work need not be lost, right? James Holland Espy, or the Storm King, going back to the 1800s, was a U.S. meteorologist who proposed burning forests on the west coast of the United States of America to increase rainfall on the east coast. So he had the ideas of these westerly winds going from the west to east, and he had ideas about burning forests and cloud condensation nuclei, increasing uh, clouds and then maybe rain. SP developed a convention, uh, convection theory of storms, explaining it in 1836 before the American Philosophical Society and in 1840 before the French Academy des Sciences uh, and the British uh, Royal Society. His theory was published in 1840 as the philosophy of storms. So the idea is that these uh, uh, methods for uh, modifying weather have been around for a while now. Uh, this is another one that uh, indicates that during the war, uh, people noticed empirically that heavy rain fell after several civil war battles. A widespread theory at the time held that thunder of artillery somehow caused clouds to let loose their own thunder and moisture. I'm unable to say whether this theory holds water. <laughs> That's a good pun there. That's by James M. McPherson uh, in Hollowed Ground. Uh, hallowed Ground, sorry, not hollowed. Uh, after the war, so uh, the knowledge or understanding of how artillery may have uh, produced uh, aerosols, which could affect clouds and cloud condensation nuclei and uh, then rain. Uh, has increased and now we have a very dedicated community that works on aerosols which are split into direct effect and indirect effect. Direct effects are where the sunlight is affected, either sun shading, dimming of the solar power, uh, solar radiation or scattering by sulfate aerosols for example. And the ideas have been used for experiments like cloud seeding, which has gone on, we will see, from uh, the 1940s. And this is from China during the Olympics, where they made a massive, massive scale experiment of shooting artillery into the clouds to hold off rain during the opening ceremony of the 2008 Beijing Olympics. And there was clear, or at least it didn't rain, during the show, so they were all very happy. This kind of experiments still go on in China and elsewhere. So this is from this Wildcraft weather uh, site, 
uh, looks at the sowing seeds in clouds. So storm clouds drop as little as 10% of their water as rain or snow, but cloud seeding has been used since the 1950s to coax more water uh, from them. Seeding can be done in two layers. So from the air, so you have an aircraft here going and dropping silver iodide flares, which are uh, ideal for uh, creating droplets and snow crystals and so on, as you can see here. So silver iodide crystals have almost exactly the same shape as ice crystals. Water droplets super cooled to less than 32 degree Fahrenheit or zero degree centigrade attached to the silver iodide and freeze. Um, ice crystals stick together and begin to uh, begin falling as snow. So once you have these uh, ice crystals, then there is uh, the collisions and then they aggregate and grow larger and then they can fall. Water releases heat as it freezes. Uh, Warmed air rises, so you have this positive feedback, as we know. Updraft lifts moist air into the clouds, making more snow. So there you go, warmed air, updrafts, and then from the ground also you can uh, fire these artillery that we saw. Propane burner on lower uh, lifts of silver iodide on towers lift, uh, sorry, Propane burner on the tower lifts here silver iodide into uh, passing storm clouds. Bottom of the clouds must be near freezing for the method to work. Okay, so seems almost well thought out. This is a cartoon from Popular Science showing how people are watching uh, the snowmaker come along and <laughs> there are a couple of animals, elks, presumably cold weather and people are uh, getting excited and ready with balloons to measure the impacts, I suppose, uh, and so on. So, the annual mean droplet concentration for warm study from clouds is shown here from uh, MODIS satellite. Uh, I think it's moderate resolution uh, infrared spectrometer or something like this. Sorry. <laughs> So, wherever the concentration of uh, droplet concentration is high, the cloud brightness is high. And the idea is to go find places where there are uh, stratiform clouds with uh, much uh, lower concentration of uh, cloud droplets. Then you enhance the cloud droplets and op optical properties to reflect sunlight. So, that was the general idea. And nature provides such an experiment. The satellite image here taken on January 16, 2018 off the coast of Europe. Pollution from the ships which burn really uh, horrible oil because it's an industry that doesn't uh, uh, stick to very high standards on octanes and others for gasoline, the diesel they use. Um, they create lines of clouds that can stretch hundreds of miles. So you can see this trailing clouds. Uh, narrower ends of the clouds are youngest, so the ship is somewhere there, uh, while broader, wavier ends are colder, so that's the trail. Okay, So we will look at aerosol impacts in a broader sense with a nice animation, but you get the idea that soggy mirrors are the clouds and they are soggy because the, it's the water droplets in them that provides them with op optical uh, properties. And the whole idea in this context of geoengineering is to see if uh, clouds can be manipulated. And then, of course, you come back to the same questions about what are the unintended consequences? Can they be done locally? Uh, do the clouds just, dis just dissipate when you uh, stop the cloud seeding or other methods of increasing brightness? Cloud seeding is done typically to increase rain, of course. Whenever there are droughts, uh, even states within India or Israel or China, they call on companies which come and spray the silver iodide and hope for rain. There is huge, there's a huge scientific debate about whether this really works and skepticism is high. But if you're a government which is in charge and the monsoon season arrives and the uh, rain is not uh, falling, then you can get desperate and resort to these methods. And if it rains, no harm done. If it doesn't rain, then you just continue to pray, I suppose. So those are not cheap, but nonetheless, they are now routinely used for uh, trying to mitigate droughts uh, in many countries across the world.